The number of the members of the Labour Party has increased dramatically over the past year to more than half a million. They will have a huge say on whether Jeremy Corbyn remains Labour leader or not. Mr Corbyn's opponents believe many have become disillusioned with his leadership. But is that the case? Our political guru Norman Smith has been to Leeds to find out. Greetings from Leeds, the lovely old covered Victorian market. But you know, in towns and cities like this, something a bit odd is going on, politically speaking. Conventional wisdom is that people just aren't interested in party politics, that they don't join political parties. And yet, over the past year or so, there's been an explosion in membership of the Labour Party. Here in Leeds, membership has more than tripled over the past 12 months. So what's going on? Hi there, you're a member of the Labour Party. I caught up with some of these new members at one of their regular street stalls in the centre of the city. Many, it seems, have never been involved in politics before. So who are they? I'm Joan Aitchison and I'm a trade union rep. I'm Marvina Newton, I'm 31 and I'm the CEO of a youth charity. My name's Jed, I'm 26, I'm a member of the Labour Party and I work in hospitality. I'm Jane Ingham, I'm 64, I'm a retired special school head teacher. In a nearby cafe, I sat down with some of these new members to find out why they joined. And it's clear the main reason was Jeremy Corbyn. I remember when Corbyn was elected, John McDonnell said that he'd waited all his life to see a socialist leader of the Labour Party. I hadn't. I never expected that to happen. But when I saw that, I recognised it and I thought, this is a massive opportunity for working people in this country. I want to be part of it. I want to make Jeremy Corbyn our Prime Minister. I think his principled stand and his commitment um, is an inspiration to young people, very definitely, but to loads of people. You know, we've seen that this morning in Leeds. Um, in the city centre, you know, from the very young to the very old, and it's just been it's been inspiring for me. It's given me a kind of a, a new lease of life as far as politics. I'm not not just a, an armchair uh, socialist anymore. He's unlike no one. It, to me, that's what's great about him, and he doesn't follow keep with the Joneses. He's not trying. It's not a popularity contest. He speaks on the heart. He's not everyone's cup of tea, but that's because. No one should be everyone's cup of tea. Only real people that care about the minorities or the disadvantaged communities should be the ones that should be in power. He's actually shown he's got his finger on the pulse in a way that, unfortunately, a lot of the Parliamentary Labour Party and a lot of the people who've been running the Labour Party over recent decades don't. I think they say that there's nothing more powerful than a, an idea whose time has come, and Jeremy's time has come. We're having a perfectly pleasant coffee here, but you know there are claims that there's abuse, there's threats, there's intimidation. I mean, do you think that's just made up or where does that come from? Yeah, there's some horrible things that have gone on. They haven't actually really been linked to Momentum or the uh, members of the Labour Party. And I think that there's an attempt to try and basically actually smear not just Jeremy Corbyn himself, but like everyone who supports him. And if there was any evidence of it, we would stop it. We are all, we're ordinary people. Uh, you know, Jane's a retired headmistress. She would stamp it out. You know, we wouldn't stand there and, and allow that to happen. People can see the power behind Jeremy, and that can intimidate most people. When you see someone that comes that doesn't tick your box, it shakes up everything. You will be scared because you're realising that your power and your privilege is going to be checked. They do feel threatened, but they don't feel threatened because we're abusive. We're certainly not abusive. Uh, what we are is we are representing change, and Jeremy represents huge change, and that threatens their very cosy position. But how do long-established party members view this sudden influx? Les, a former miner, and Melvin are stalwarts of their local parties. In the past, probably three or four of us used to go down slogging the streets, doing leaflets, but now we've got, uh, it's refreshing that we've got lots of new members. Hopefully, they're not going to be fair-weather members. They're going to be with us for a long time because it's important. I, I, I think in my constituency that the people that come into it are not, they're new to politics. You know, they've never been a member of a political party before, you know, and in that sense they're quite naive, you know, they, but they're, they're, trying to, they're trying to learn, understand how the party works, how party politics works. 
This glorious Victorian swimming pool in West Leeds was saved after a local outcry. And the concern of some older Labour members is that the new Corbynistas just aren't interested in this sort of politics. You know, I'd finished as an MP, I'd just about retired, as it were, from the job, and someone rings up and says, the council shut in Bramley Baths, we need to save it. Now, we could have stopped there and shouted at the council, save the bath, save the bath for a protest group. We met in order to try to say, could we run it better? I think it's the, the fact that change is taking place, and mm. a lot of people are still uncertain just quite what that yeah. change means and what it means for them. There's also a fear of a split opening up in the party. I'm more anxious about a massive rift between elected representatives, whether they're councillors or MPs, and the membership. I've never known the split be that way. I think it is for the Labour Party a very risky time. It's a very febrile time. Uh, I would hope that people can uh, calm down the rhetoric a little bit and say we can think out alternatives. We've got ideas from the ground floor and uh, MPs have got ideas together with ideas for the future. And there are those persistent reports of abuse, intolerance of non-Corbyn supporters. Indeed, one local Labour MP was so anxious about the tensions in his local party, he didn't want to speak to us on camera. Another who would is Richard Bergen, a key Corbyn ally. Hey, Richard. Hi, how are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Come in. Thanks so much. You know there have been persistent reports of intolerance, abuse towards non-Corbyn supporters. Okay. It's important that all Labour Party members respect each other. It's completely inappropriate for Labour MPs or any MP from any party to be subjected to threatening behaviour. But what I also say as well is it's important that Labour MPs respect and treat with respect party members and new party members as well. Are you saying or do you think then that some Labour MPs are seeking to smear, frankly, Corbyn supporters? Well, I'm not going to stand by and watch hundreds of thousands of new members demonised as thugs, misogynists, brick throwers and bullies, because that's simply not the case. I've met fabulous new members of the Labour Party, both young and old, who are motivated by one thing and one thing only, getting a Labour government, getting rid of the Conservatives and making society a better place. And I think it's wrong to demonise those hundreds of thousands of people. And what of the threat of deselection and getting rid of critical Labour MPs? I'm not frightened of mentioning uh, the word deselection, but I think we need to be outward looking. Um, in the past, Labour MPs have been deselected. It sometimes happens. Uh, it's, uh, nothing, uh, it's, it's, it's nothing unheard of, but we shouldn't be focusing on some kind of witch hunt against Labour MPs. Uh, if, during the last leadership election, if Yvette Cooper had been elected, if Liz Kendall had been elected, if Andy Burnham had been elected. It may have been the case, of course, that I'd have had disagreements on this policy or that policy, but I'd have never have tried to capsize the ship. Back in the Roots and Fruits Cafe, no one mentions the D word, deselection, but the warning signs are clear. Actually, if there's people who are uncomfortable or don't like the politics that the members want, you know, it's perfectly legitimate for local members in their area to choose who they want their candidate to be at the next election. This is being treated like it's some kind of horrible, terrible thing, but actually the Labour Party is the property of its members. To see the people that we know have power fight like little kids and play with our lives, and tell us that our voice and influence does not count because they're so used to that power. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous and shameful. Regardless of whoever, we have voted him as our leader. You can't take it back. It's not take seats. It's not. You do not do that. Come behind Jeremy Corbyn and actually be actively supporting his leadership. It's democracy. And if the vote goes for Jeremy, as it seems it is most likely to do, then you know that's what you have to do. If, if you're a Labour MP, you can be opposed to Jeremy Corbyn if you want to be. Uh, but where I think it's become unacceptable is that they appear to be opposed, or some of them appear to be opposed to their own Labour Party members. And that really isn't on. Of course there have been surges in Labour membership before. The last time was under Tony Blair and he went on to win three huge election victories. This time however the surge under Mr Corbyn is frankly proving much more troublesome and divisive with many Labour MPs fearful that these new members risk turning Labour from a political party 
into a personality cult.